Hello, I'm Professor David Ruzik, Illinois Energy Prof, and I even have the shirt to prove it. Today's topic is the current status of U.S. small modular reactors, and I've titled it, So You Want to Build a Nuclear Reactor. Well, our country does, and so in 2020, the government set up a program to be able to encourage the newest generation, the fourth generation of nuclear reactors to be built. And they had a competition, and two reactor designs proved to be worthy to actually win the competition and win the government funding to be able to build them. And back um, in 2021, I did two videos, one on each of those. And while I'll review them, if you really want to learn a lot about it, you should watch those. And the key about all of this is that they are small, modular reactors, meaning that the reactor part can be built in a factory that can make a lot of them. And then they're small enough so you can get them to the site on a truck. Maybe the truck has to be bigger than that, but the point is you don't have to build the reactor right where you are going to have it. So there were two of these reactors. One of them was by X Energy, and I just want to review a little bit about that particular reactor. So it uses triso fuel, and the key here, it's a highly enriched fuel, and each individual fuel pellet is the size of a grain of sand. And it has containment around it. It has a carbon shell, and it's almost impossible to break, just like if you tried to break a grain of sand. But a bunch of those are put all together, and then they're put inside another containment building, the sphere that you see. And in this way, all of the nuclear waste is trapped inside that fuel pellet and that fuel ball. Another key thing about these fourth generation reactors is that they are inherently safe. And what I mean by that is that if the fuel gets hot, all right, and that's the worry, oh my God, we're gonna have a meltdown, the reaction stops. And that's pretty darn incredible. Now, why does it stop? Well, it stops because of something called resonances. And if this is the um, reactivity, the amount of reaction that is going to take place, and this is the energy of the neutron, this curve generally goes down like this. When you have a nuclear reaction, you create high energy neutrons and they have to be slowed to be able to have more reactivity. And this is the normal way a reactor works, and this reactor would work nicely, but there happen to be other things in the reactor, like uranium-238, which doesn't react. And these have resonances, certain regions where the chance of absorbing the neutron is much, much higher. And if you're absorbing the neutron, then it cannot fission. But what happens when the fuel gets hot is that these resonances get broader. And when they get broader, all of the neutrons get sucked up and none of them continue to produce fission events. Another advantage of having this high neutron energies is that the wastes, the long-lived fission products, are actually used up. They are converted into to heat, they fission. And these are now contained inside this fuel structure, these grains of sand that you cannot break, and this double containment of both the grain of sand and the golf ball size piece. These are the fuel, 
And one of the big advantages of this, if you use these pebbles as fuel, they can get used up in your nuclear reactor and it goes in and it moves around with all the other pebbles that are in there. But at some point, you can pull the pebbles out just like you can put new ones in. And this process is continuous. You don't have to turn the reactor off and not produce electricity for a month. You can continually take pebbles out. Hey, if they were a new one, they happened to get to the bottom sooner, put it back in. If it's one that's already used up its life, it drops right into your containment unit. Beyond continual refueling, these reactors are some, if not the hottest reactors. And if you go at an extremely high temperature, all of your efficiency of making electricity is much higher, but also your efficiency at making other processes, things you need a lot of heat for, things like at a chemical plant, for instance. The plan is to build four of these together, which all together will make about 320 watts of electricity or 200 megawatts of heat. The other reactor that has been approved and is in progress is Terra Power's natrium. If that word sounds familiar, it's because the chemical name for sodium is Na, which is natrium. And this has sodium in its title for good reason, because it's a salt-cooled liquid sodium reactor. Now, this type of reactor has the same inherent safety. If the fuel gets too hot, it stops. But there's some other very big differences. One is the fuel rods, a much more standard type that are used in today's submarines, for instance, are in a pool of molten sodium. Uh, and once again, because you use high energy neutrons, the wastes are used up. And if we take this power plant, we take the heat away, not by adding water to sodium, and everyone knows you put water in sodium, that's a bad thing, I got a video on that one too. But because I take this heat out from the reactor with a high temperature salt, I can store that salt in another facility nearby. But the advantage of this is normally when you make electricity, you have to use it. And since we all use so much more electricity at the beginning of the day, we have to have enough power plants around to handle that. Well, this reactor is going to completely be used all the time. But the salt can store the energy. And then when you need all the electricity, you use the salt to run through a normal uh, boiler and turbine and the rest of the balance of your plant. So you can get electricity on demand even from a nuclear power plant. So those were the designs. And so now you want to build one of them. OK. The process is a little complicated. Number one, you have to pick a site. You have to own the property. And you now have to do an environmental impact um, study. Are we going to wipe out the only living species of some small fish or something else? You have to get approval for that site from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the Department of Energy, the public hearings. And if everything passes, you can start getting a construction permit. So step one, you get a construction permit for the non-nuclear parts. In other words, you can, build, you can dig a hole in the ground. It's not a nuclear reactor yet. Now you have to design your reactor. Now hopefully you've been doing this right along, but this is a real design. This is a detailed design and you have to prove that it's safe. So you have to write a preliminary safety review, an analysis report. And this gets studied. 
and this gets approved by the NRC and the Department of Energy, and there's public hearings, the people can say, wait, I don't think this part is quite right. Finally, if it passes this review, you can now do the construction permit for the nuclear reactor again. All right, this is wonderful. Then you have to build it. And you need the right people and the right talent and the right materials and the right fuel. All right, I now have it built. How do we know if you built it right? So you have to submit another report documenting everything that you did, proving that everything is done and built according to the specifications. Again, approval from NRC, Department of Energy, and public hearings. And finally, you get your operating permit. And at this point, you can make electricity and sell it. Because during this entire process, which takes many years, you have only been spending money. You have not been making money from this power plant. So where are we with the reactors I talked to you about? TerraPower's Natrium had chose the site in Wyoming. And it's um, in the corner of Wyoming, oh, hundreds of miles from Salt Lake City. This is the site where there was a coal power plant. And at first the thought is, oh, we can use the boilers and we can use the steam generators and, gen and so forth. But remember, all that stuff's I don't know, 40 years old, you can buy new, work better. But all of the transmission lines, all of the electrical hookups already go to that spot. And this concept of taking a place where there was a coal power plant and now building a nuclear one is not just happening here. When that slide was first put out by TerraPower, it may have been the only, but really it's just the first. And I'll have more videos to come on other conversions of that in the future. So, we got a site. Now we need the money. And Amazon has stepped up and said, not only will we give you money to supplement what the Department of Energy program is going to put into it, but they said, we'll use the electricity. Because you have Amazon Web Services, and they have a lot of computer services, a lot of computer storage, giant data centers, and they need electricity to run it. So where in the process is uh, these natrium reactors? Well, they made an environmental impact statement for that spot in Wyoming, and it was accepted. Yay! They got their non-nuclear construction permit. And they have just recently submitted their preliminary safety analysis report. And this report and the progress on this, you can find in the website I have listed there, which will have some tag on the bottom so you can find it. This is public knowledge. This is a government-supported program. And you can see all of the documents and steps and where they are in the Na Nuclear Regulatory Commission in deciding where it is. And if you drill into each one of these, you can actually then go to the document itself. And this preliminary safety analysis report is not trivial. 1,700 pages. And each of those pages has detailed information on it. And this took a lot of time to write, to understand what to write, to know how to write, to have someone else read and see if it actually makes sense and is doing the right thing. So what is the prognosis for actually getting this accepted, building it, and then getting a safety analysis report and finally operating? It is going ahead. They call this Kemmerer 1 in Wyoming, and it could be operational by 2029. Hey, it's the first of a kind that's ever been built. Undoubtedly, some problems are going to come up around there. My best guess is power on the grid in 2031.
So how about our other reactor, X Energy, the one using the triso fuel? They're going to build it in Sea Drift, Texas. And the key is that this is right next to a Dow chemical plant. Remember I said this makes really high energy temperature, high temperature energy. That high temperature energy can be used to run a chemical plant instead of the coal plant they currently use. In fact, what Dow Chemical wants to do is one day they're running their entire chemical plant on the electricity and heat made by a, nuke, by a coal reactor, and then they want to press a button, the nuclear reactor will take over and they can retire the coal reactor and never miss a day of making all the chemicals and products that they make. That's their goal. So who has the money? Well, as you might have guessed, Dow Chemical has put money in, in addition, of course, to the major amount of money, which comes from the Department of Energy program that said it would build some new advanced modular reactors. Where are they in this process? They picked their site. They got their environmental impact program in. It was approved. They can um, uh, begin non-nuclear construction. And they haven't quite submitted their 1,700-page document yet, their preliminary safety analysis report proposal, but it is going to be going in soon. So they're a little bit behind the other one, but on track. And where are they? Well, remember, the fuel for this reactor does not exist. This triso fuel has all of these huge advantages, except you got to make it. So in addition to making a power plant, there has to be a fuel manufacturing facility. And it goes through a very similar permit level decision tree. And it is going to be built near Oak Ridge National Laboratory or adjacent to it in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, which is near Knoxville. And they have already had the ability to make non-nuclear or non-fuel making parts. And so their license procedure is still going. And the thing is, you don't have to have the fuel until you're going to run the plant. So both of these things are going to be built in parallel. And they could be ready by 2029 with the fuel. The prognosis for X energy is again, if everything goes right, it could be 2029, but they have to make both a fuel facility and a nuclear reactor. I'm thinking maybe my guess would be 2032. So in conclusion, the two award-winning small modular reactors are actually being built. And there are other small modular reactors in this permitting process to be built around the country. The world needs nuclear. And being able to take the nuclear reactor part and build it, many of them, in some one factory and then shipping them to a place where they can be used. This concept of small modular reactors is very likely to be the thing that will power the world. And that's what you need to know about building a nuclear power plant and the status of our current SMRs.